Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Norm's Friends. Come on in. I'm sure everybody's tired from shoveling snow. Was that amazing or what? Six, excuse me, six days before spring, a foot of snow. What a story. Anyway, you know who I am. I'm David B., the Reading Sky, 603 404 9338. Psychic intuitive readings, mediumship, psychometry, tarot. Speaking of tarot, today I have a new deck from a very good friend of mine and colleague, Sonia Babineau, gave me another deck called Star Man. Uh, they're done by uh, an artist who drew some album covers for David Bowie, so hence Starman. But in there, if you m remember his album covers, the, you'll, you can get right into the drawing. So we have that today, something new. We'll e explore them together because I've only looked at maybe four or five of them at the most and just two or three of them just now. All right, and oh, also, biffit at yahoo.com. Any questions you have, comments, you want to critique me, go right ahead. That's where you can get a hold of me. No guests today, by the way. Excuse me, water time. So, again, no guests. Um, Later we can talk about, well, we will talk about uh, my little story from yesterday, naturally. Yesterday was election day where I live in Londonderry. I always, I volunteer for the poll worker. It was fantastic, but I'll tell we can get a little more, more detail about that. Not necessarily the polls, but getting to and from. There you have it. So, let's start with uh, today, naturally. We have a famous quote. And just so everybody knows, if I look confused, it's because the clock is not turned ahead here. It still, it still says 4.05. So that might throw me off because it's like I'm sort of ahead of myself, right? Anyway. So we'll start with a famous quote, and I did uh, write down the author of the famous quote, all right? So I kind of like it. Here we go. The simple things are also the most extraordinary things, and only the wise can see them. How true is that? Again. Let's refresh. If you don't nourish your soul, you have a, an unbelievable void there, an unbelievable craving that doesn't go away because you don't know what the craving is for. You don't know what you're yearning for, and it's all because you're not taking care of your spirit, your soul, your inner self, which we all have. We're not just physical beings. We're spiritual beings. You have to nourish your spirit. So I'll read it again, and when you think of it, it's, it's exactly what this is talking about. The simple things are the most extraordinary things, and only the wise can see them, because nourishing your soul, your spirit, is one of the most simplest things you can do. I mean, it's, it's how much simpler can you get it? A, a, a preschooler can do it. Right? So, and once you do that, if you nourish your soul and let your inner self just fill up with that uh, love and light and positive energy, and then you do notice the most simplest things and how extraordinary they really are. But don't take my word for it. Give it a go. All right? And the author for that was, I don't have a clue who he is, Paul... Coelho, C-O-E-L-H-O. -E it says the alchemist. So, whatever that is. All right. So, today, the fun facts, 
seeing as spring starts next week, I figure, you know, the weather's going to start getting warm. We're going to have beach weather on our mind. We're going to have beaches on our mind, right? Boating, all kinds of neat summer activities we're going to start thinking about very shortly. So, I figure, why not do fun facts about swimming? So, and just so you know, I have a bunch of them because they're very short. You know, a lot of times I only have, what, you know, five fun facts because they're lengthy. These are really short, so I just have a bunch of them, all right? So, here's some fun facts about swimming. Check them out. I think they're kind of cool. I knew some of them, not all of them. The first couple of ones I knew, but not to the extent. Swimming burns almost 40 cent. Uh, 40 cent. I must have 50 cent on the mind. I'm, what, whatever happened to 50 cent, by the way? Let me start over. Swimming burns almost 40% more calories than biking per hour. So why, who wants to go around biking now, weaving in and out of the traffic downtown with these crazy drivers just looking to pick off bikers, right? You can go swimming and burn off 40% more calories. How's this? Swimming burns almost 30% more calories than running per hour. Again, who wants to run? Why run downtown here and, again, let these crazy drivers use you for a target when you can um, swim in the safety of a pool or, you know, at the Y with a lifeguard, whatever, and you're, you're making out better. How's this one? This one, I didn't know. This one is amazing. Are you ready? This is what it said. 65% of Americans can't swim. It's weird because, it, you know, almost everyone I know can swim. So where are these 65% of Americans that can't swim? Probably waiting in line at the welfare office. I don't know. All right. Here's another one. Swimming became an Olympic sport in what well, year? Come on. Somebody out there must know the answer. Oh, you give up? All right. Swimming became an Olympic sport in 1896. There you go. This is a first. It's really not to do with it. It's related to swimming, but... I think this one's pretty neat too because I, you know, you never think of this stuff. The Adriatic, which was launched alongside the Titanic, was the first ocean liner to have a swimming pool, and that was in 1906. So, by the way, the, the Titanic also had a swimming pool. So, depending on which site you read, because I read a couple, one said the Titanic, but then the southern one said, no, the Adriatic, which was with the Titanic, was really the first one. But, of course, who heard of the Adriatic? I never did till today. Who's heard of the Titanic? Everyone. All right. How's this? Bet you didn't know this. And I wasn't a world-class swimmer, but I'm affected. More than half of world-class swimmers shuffle. One of those days. More than half of world-class swimmers suffer from shoulder pain. And I have mild shoulder pain. Imagine, I must have been a world-class swimmer and not realized it. All right, how's this? This is kind of interesting. I don't know how they worked. The first ever swimming goggles were crafted from tortoise shells. Well, how do these people see? What are they, sort of just put them on just to go dunk underwater or something? That was kind of interesting. All right, this one I knew, and this is why I like to swim. When swimming, you are using every major muscle in your body. That's why it's such wonderful exercise. That one I know. 
Oh, here's another first. Get this. Uh, well, we'll call it the first. The oldest concrete swimming pool was built in Texas in what year? First concrete swimming pool. Come on. All right, 1915. All right, here's, here's a little uh, tidbit for all you women's health uh, freaks or women, women's health. Women's History Month fanatics. All right, this is for all you people out there. Put on your Women's History Month ears, all right? Gir quite a feat for a one, man or woman, but so for Women's History Month, this is included. Gertrude Adderl, E-D-E-R-L-E, -E, born in Manhattan, New York, Man New York City, right? But it said Manhattan, so we get Manhattan, New York. Get this, became the first woman in 1926 to swim across the English Channel. Let's hear it for Gertrude. All right, three more facts. All right, here's another fun fact. In addition to reducing exercise-induced asthma, swimming regularly can also help reduce inflammation as well as lowering stress and depression, which improves mood disorders. I'm telling you, we should have a, a swim day at the river. All right, how's the, get this. Swimming helps to improve blood flow to the brain because it increases your oxygen intake. I can put that one together. That doesn't say it here. Swimming helps improve blood flow to the brain and is considered therapeutic, meditative, and great for increasing focus and other brain functions that can help improve memory and get the clincher even in people living with dementia. So all you mean people out there that threw your parents in nursing homes because they're starting to get dementia. Get them out of the nursing home, never mind putting them in the nursing home. Put them in a pool or put them on the beach to go swimming. All right, and finally, la I saved this one for last. This is for all of you uh, woke people out there and all you people who love screaming about white supremacy and white guys and this and that, all right? These will probably be canceled out now by woke, all right? Are you ready? I love this one. Benjamin Franklin. So we know who he is. Are you sure he's one of our, you know, he was here when the country first started. I'm one of our founding fathers. Pretty brilliant guy, right? All right. Benjamin Franklin, are you ready? Invented swimming flippers and fins as swimming aids to help boost swimming performance for new and intermediary swimmers. There you have it, folks. That's it for today. So, um, I hope you enjoyed the fun facts. There they are. These cards are too big for me to shuffle, so I have to shuffle them the short way, the thin way. Anyway, um, so, yesterday, as, well, I shouldn't say, well, as usual for the past, what, four elections, I, uh, uh, three elections. Anyway, I was a poll worker yesterday down in Londonderry. All right. So my shift was 5.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And so I leave the house. First of all, remember they said it was supposed to be raining until what? 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock or whatever it was. I forget, right? And then it was going to start snowing. I figure, well, you know, that's not too bad, right? I'll make it there. No problem, because it's only rain, right? And if it's not going to start snowing until whatever it was, 10 o'clock, I go, how bad can it be after an hour and a half of snowing? All right. So, you know, no big deal. Whatever time it was, I went to bed. I had to go to bed early. Monday night, excuse me, 
one second, as I tell my little buddy Fred when he wants something. Just hold on one minute. And when I hold up my finger like this and go, buddy, one minute, he knows because like if he's meowing for something, depending on where he is, when he meows, I know what he wants. But anyway, I'll go, buddy, one minute, and he knows what it is because he stops. Anyway, so I figure, again, no problem, right? Rain till 8 or 10 or whenever it was, I figure, well, piece of cake to get there to make a long story short. Or should I keep it a long story? We'll see what, how it goes. Anyway, um, so I, I get up. I woke up without the alarm, mind you. With, I did set the alarm for four, but I woke up before four. I think it's all, you know, programmed up here. Anyway, um, I woke up at like 10 or four. I get up, and as soon as I get up, I look out the window, and it's like a full-blown blizzard it's like you've got to be kidding me what is going on so needless to say whoops I get ready I have my coffee right I'll, I figure it's really it's less than a 10 minute drive to get there but I figure I dropped some cards excuse me I don't want to lose any right away all right I got them anyway what's the Wow, look at judgment. And, uh, anyway, I get out and I start driving. Well, the street that I live on, they do a good job. I think they do a good job because they know that seniors live there. But they did do a good job. Then I get down to the main street, not too bad. Then I turn off onto Mammoth Road. Oh, I just was following tire tracks, but... I don't think I went over 20 miles an hour. I went real, real slow, and it's hills like this. And not too bad, not too many turns, really. So I was kind of fortunate there. And I, my new car, the car that I have for me, new car for me, it's not all that great in the snow, so I'm kind of hesitant to begin with. All right, so anyway. I'm driving slow, and you know, right to get into the school where they vote, there's a set of lights, a slight incline, and of course, naturally, could it be green so I could just continue right along? No, it had to be turned red. So, when it turns green, I start going again, and what does the car do? It slides like this, right? It's going, but at the same time it's going, it's sliding, because it's, you know, it's it's like goes to the hill to go down into the parking lot for the school so it's like zzz, turning like that so anyway they have us park along uh well it was a fence but it was really a snow bank from all the snow i've gotten lately so i parked there then i go in and it wasn't that busy there believe it or not there were people again waiting to come in for the polls to open at six, I loved it. And so I parked there and I go in and you know, I was at poll station number two and I was with uh, this lady, Carol. Of course, I'm talking to a lot of people in there, but Carol I worked with before. So we were having fun. I don't know how long she was there. They yanked her away. She had to go to another station that was unmanned. So for a couple of minutes, I'm by myself. I usually just give out the ballots. Well, you know, I can check people into you after scan their license and, you know, uh, request that they say who they are, where they live, blah, blah, blah. And you give them, you know, once they do all that, then you hit the button and it's... Uh, spits up, prints out. I shouldn't say spit because they don't spit. It prints out this slip, and once it prints out the slip, then you give them the bell, and off they go. So I did that for a few minutes by myself. They send this other lady over there, Christine, and we start talking. Lo and behold, who is Christine? And I, I know I just met her yesterday. I wrote her info down. 
my state rep. I mentioned that, my state rep. So we chit-chat back and forth. She's going to be a guest on here shortly, so just so you know. So that's my polling experience, almost. In the meantime, you know, while it was a little low because I had coffee, so naturally I have to, you know, go to the men's room to tinkle. So I'm going, and as I come back, I check out where the car is, where they made us park. The snowbank, this is no lie, was like three or four feet high from plowing and plowing, right? I said, oh, this is going to be nice. So when my shift was over, and I had this fantastic uh, butternut squash apple soup, oh, it was so good. I had some of that before I left. Anyway, so when I go out, because now I want to go home, I couldn't believe the weather. It was like really coming down. I said, and again, my car is not so good in the snow. So I said, I'm thinking to myself, it's going to take me an hour to get home. To make a long story short, I go out there, I regret a shovel. Because like I said, the snow bank is, wait a minute, four feet high. So like up to here on me, right? Yeah, about up to here on me. And I just start shoveling. And how cool is this? The guys, one of the guys that was plowing. They just kept plowing a lot. I don't know how many guys, but the guy drove around once in the plow. I had just started to shovel. I'm telling you, with treatment, they were fantastic. I just did a couple of shovels. The next thing you know, here comes the guy with a, what do they call it, a little payloader. You know, the thing is only about three or four feet wide. Back holes, what it's not a back hole because it, it's not the hand like this. It's, you know, not much wider than this, really, right? Not much wider than this. A payload, I don't know, a little thing. It's only wide enough for one person to sit in, right? It was cool. He comes up with that, and he came about this uh, within a couple of inches to the front of the car. And that was cool. And when he did that, you know, there was basically no snow in front of the car. Of course, I start driving. And I'm on an incline, so once I start driving, whoop, whoop, and I kept getting stuck. I kept half the, I had a shovel, because the car would go, zoop, slide into snow. I'd shovel, i go up another foot or two, slide into snow, but I finally got out. Anyway, so I had to bring the shovel back. And then, so as the luck would have it, when it's time for me to climb the big hill, right behind the plow, of course, and the light is green, and the plow's in front of me. I don't know, I wasn't right behind him, a couple of car lengths. So, we're going up the hill, and he makes it, and the light turns yellow, and I was debating, you know, if the ground was clear, I would have booted it. But where it was snowy, I said, oh, if somebody doesn't see me, and, it, and I get squashed, or my car gets dented, I'm screwed because it would have been my fault. So I said, I'll stop. Now, it's wide. The thing has got to be where you come in two or three feet, two or, yeah, two or three feet, two or three car lungs wide, right? And I mean lengthwise, not widthwise. Maybe even four car lengths across you could fit. Anyway, so then all of a sudden the light turns green. In the meantime, it was a police car comes up and it's the first car in line and here I am so I'm up like this and you know I'm coming up a hill like this but at the same time it's a it's a, a decline like that right and I got to take a left so anyway the light turns green and I'm going and the car is sliding and slide and I almost slid I swear the whole four car links down like this right and I was barely going forward and I kept going in you know so first and like the guy with the little uh, front end loader there I have to commend him because that I thought that was absolutely super fantastic wonderful that he did that came up and got all the snow out from in front of my car and it was when it back up the light, I'm sliding and sliding, and the car's going zit, zit. And of course, uh, anybody around the car that would have heard nothing but F bombs, naturally. And 
the light turns red and I go F again. I'm gonna, you know, I'm really gonna get stuck. But I noticed that the police car wasn't moving even though the light was green for them. And I looked to my right and no cars coming down the hill, not for a ways I could see so. I figured he must want me to succeed with this attempt so I kept going and finally I must have come within a couple of feet of the front of the police cruise but finally off I went but getting getting back going because I just take Mammoth Road all the way to the road I live on and not far but Mammoth Road I'm going I was going real slow again like 20 there were cars off off the side of the road it was amazing but I made it home you know, thank God I didn't have to basically use the brakes because that's how slow I went. So that's my story for uh, being the poll worker. Anyway, if anybody wants a reading with these new Starman cards, by all means, 603-404-3091. you have any questions, comments, don't be shy. 603-640, is it the right, yup, 640-3091. Um, so, oh, and as luck would have it, I was glad because I was going to call them and suggest that perhaps it'd be best if I stay home yesterday instead of bartending from 4 to 8 locally here, just down the hill. Um, while I was at doing the polls yesterday, volunteering at the polls, I got a text, David, stay home. Your safety is more important than opening up today. I said, all right. That was sent by Kathy, so I texted her. I said, my kind of girl. How can you go wrong with that? It's that time again, as I say to Fred. One minute, but less. Oh, plus, I know what's going on. I think today also, um, I know where I live, the two buildings, uh, not only no, no cable, but people that have Xfinity for their phone also, and I don't know if it, they just meant their home phone or their cell phones. People where I live had, they were upset, no cable and no phones. So perhaps maybe nobody's watching today because they got no cable. Poor me. Because it, I don't know what's going on. Maybe Scott, what do you think? You think that might be it? <laughs> I, that just dawned on me. No, right. We're both buildings where I live. No, no cable. They were upset. No cable. No Wi-Fi and no phone. So. Power hmm. Oh, that's right. I didn't even think of that. See, I didn't think of that either. Cause, well, you know, where I live, you got to be 62 or over. So, as luck would have it, we have generators. <laughs> If you lose power, it's for like, I don't know, 10 or 20 seconds, and it comes right back on, which is good. Um, this time of year anyway, you know, in the springtime or fall, or even in the summer, I wouldn't really care. But, see, and I switched just in time a couple of weeks ago. I switched to um, T-Mobile Wi-Fi. Like I said, Xfinity or Comcast, the thieves, the highway robbers without a gun. In the beginning of February, well, my, after the two years was up on my introductory rate of 73.95, I think, 70, whatever it was, yeah, 73.99. Went from 73 to $105 a month. Do you believe it? So what's that? That's it's like almost a 50% increase. So I was very irate at that. 
upset and I said, this is ridiculous and I just, I go on the line, ISP, ISP, Wi-Fi providers in my neighborhood, T-Mobile, come up. I call them, they have it in my neighborhood now. How's that for timing? I signed up and it's only 50 bucks a month, less than half price. And get this, when you get it, and what do they tell you? It's only $50 a month and as long as you keep the service, the price will never go up ever. Imagine so. All you people out there, if you're out there because you, if your cable's working, all right? Um, I bet you that's what it is. Nobody's got cable because the phone hasn't rang. Which is, I mean, let's face it, it's <laughs> very, very, I don't ever remember the phone ever ringing. Anyway, um, for all you people out there, like you got a six-year-old, um, yeah, six year old, a six-month-old infant, call up T-Mobile. Put the T-Mobile in their name. Imagine if they live to be 100, 100 years from now, they'll still only be paying $50 for Wi-Fi. What did imagine that? All the money they'd be saving and saving you until they're old enough to realize that, hey, wait a minute, I want money, right? When they realize that you've been using their name to sort of, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, surf the system. No, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, well, you know, manipulate the system. They'll probably want money from you, but it just might be worth it. Um, oh, and now does anybody know about this? I went online this morning, and what is there? A new airline starting at the airport today, but it only goes to, I forget, or it goes to Raleigh. No, does it go to Raleigh-Durham, I think, from Manchester? non-stop to Raleigh-Durham, I think. And it's uh, some mongrel airlines. I never really heard of it, but... So maybe next time I go visit my sister, if it is that, in fact, is Raleigh-Durham that it goes to non-stop, I'll take that, because that's where she lives. And if worse comes to worse, I could, like, walk to the terminal in case of inclement weather like we had yesterday or, you know, uh, something like that. That's always an option, and I do love walking, so there you have it. Well, anyway, I brought these cards, so what I'm going to do is I brought these cards. I'm going to pull three of them, and all right, we'll sort of like just do a general type reading for who's ever interested. You know who you are, but I'll do a general reading just, um, you know, for between now and next week. So, wow, busy, 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 busy. All right, these cards are just incredible. So, we start with the five of pentacles, all right? One, two, three, four, and, let me see if I can see the fifth one here. One, two, all right, there is. One, two, Wait, three, four. I don't see the fifth one. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four. Well, that's how busy these cards are. Let's see if I can find the fifth one. Oh, no. Well, this isn't really the best start, huh? It says five of pentacles, but there's only four. Hmm. Well... Anyway, this is sort of like, you know, whatever you want, you know, you reap what you sow. And in this card, you know, look at it. All this lavish, beautiful greenery here to just sort of um, support that, you know, cliche. You reap what you sow, which is you do. And, you know, it's just, it's really to reap the benefits. It's, 
in this case, we're going to reap uh, the benefits are going to be a lot more than what we think from the little bit of work that's uh, in front of us to actually uh, reach a sort of, if we have a goal in mind, it's, it's not as much work as you think it's going to be to sort of get to that point all right and it's just incredible there you know you don't and plus with this card here it's it's not like you have to you know once you start you can take a break you know you can take a break here you can enjoy the ride on the way to the end there to your final destination your the end result that you have in mind it's so fulfilling in the meantime while you're going there it's you know if you sort of just look around at all the beauty that surrounds us constantly 24 7 and it's true it's really not work at all and even well now and of course and then the next card we have here is the Tree of Pentacles. So look at this. All right, so the Tree of Pentacles, some of the work is done, all right, because now we went from five pentacles down to three. And as you can see, one, two, three. There's the beginning, there's the middle, there's the end. So with the Tree of Pentacles left, there's lots of uh, very vibrant, lots of vibrancy there and strength. And light, it's, and it's so easy to... <sighs> Good afternoon. Welcome to Norm's Friends. How are you today? How are you? I'm very it's well. From Memphis. Tina, how are you? Good. How's the weather up there? We, well, I'm going to say we got about a foot of snow. It's nice today, although it's getting windy, windy, windy now. I know. Well, okay. But we have windy, windy, windy here. Do you? Yeah. And did you it's get... It's just that there's no snow left, thank God. Cut it out. You, you should, it was like a full-blown blizzard up here yesterday. Oh, my goodness. Yesterday was bad. But we had school, so I'm, I'm happy. What, you had school yesterday? We had to. I don't want to take another day off. No, that's terrible. Ah. Anyway... Yes. Tina, if you want a reading, here's the thing. I'm in the middle of one here, but I, I'll do a reading for you, but it's, these three cards are going to be excluded from them. This was just a general reading. Okay. This was just a okay. general reading for the next week, so I was right in the okay. middle card. And this is, I don't know if you were, were you watching earlier? I was. I was watching the whole time. Wow, see that? I don't think people up here have cable. But anyway, like I said, this is a new deck from my yeah. good friend and colleague, um, yeah. Sonia. And it's yeah. called Star Man. And if you can see him, they're like David Bowie type art because it's from the guy who yeah. did it. Anyway, whoa, so you want a reading? Do you want these cards or fluorite? Yes. Uh, yeah, okay. Kind of what? What kind of cards are they? They're called Starman. They're tarot cards. Oh, they're from David Bowie. What did you say, David Bowie? Cards? Yeah, the guy who drew a couple of album covers for him is the guy who drew these tarot cards. So that's. Okay. Mm, so I'll we'll try do. Those cards. I don't mind. All right. Let's see how we do these. Like, and again, three are missing right away. So, but you are, you know, you get the cards you're supposed to get anyway. So yeah, let's that's see. Cool. Let's see what happens. So, like me and with you, they're all new to me, so we're exploring them together. Okay. All right, so, first of all, look, I love it. It's the Prince of Wands, all right? And you do get the cards oh. you're supposed to get. You get the Prince of Wands. It's very, very busy. I love it. So... The Prince of Wands actually looks like a transgender. It looks like a chick to me. 
It's, uh, it does. It really does if you see it. But it's David Bowie's face on the card. If you could just really see it close, it's David Bowie's face. But it, it looks yeah. li like a chick. But anyway, so it's the Prince of Wands. So, and I'm going sideways because I have to look at the card to really read it. But in this, there's a lot going on. There's all this, you know, Prince is so, it, you know, it's all this energy and it's sort of like, uh, uh, you know, a sort of young feeling type energy. You know what I mean? It's not, it's got nothing to do with age, but it's just all this wonderful energy coming around. Yeah. And it, you know, it's sort of, it's so sort of invigorating that you really wake up to your surroundings here and you, you know, it's so much easier to sort of see the direction that you have to go in. The, you, the energy is so light and so positive. It's lighting the way for you. It's exhilarating. You could, you could see the whole path that it is that you want to take, that you sort of have to stay on to accomplish what it is, you know, in your, your mind, the, the goal that you have nice. set. And let's Very see. Nice. Yep. All right. And the second card we have is, well, here we go. It's uh, the world. So that's a... Uh, um, major arcana and this one this is definitely a chick but then again you never know it could be a a, a transgender again because the graphics are just so spectacular but so the you know the world it's right there going f you know what i said from the first card how positive and vibrant and invigorating this energy is all right, the very next card is the world card because you're going to be in, being infused with all that wonderful, fulfilling energy. You, you know, you're just feeling so, shall we say, in control and so in tune yeah. to all this positiveness coming your way that no matter what it's you, you know take advantage of that spectacular feeling of contentment and be as you as you're in that position that you are in you know it's yours is for the taking now that's how fantastic this period is for you right now and here we, and then we end up with the seven of pentacles. Let me see if I could see seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. You know, so far, every card, the five of pentacles, I could only see four. This is the seven of pentacles. I only see six. So, oh. really? one, two, three, four. Oh, no, seven. Excuse me. Excuse me. Two of them look like shadows. Excuse me, but anyway. Oh. All right, so our last card that we have is the Seven of Pentacles. All right, so in this case, it's after the first two cards in the world. All right, taking advantage of all this wonderful, fulfilling, uplifting, incredible, life-giving energy that's surrounding you right now. All right, it's the same thing. With the Seven of Pentacles, it, you know, it's look around, you still, it's all this brightness is still there and it's fulfillment from the work that you've been doing. You've done all this work and now everything, you know, it's, yeah. it's surrounding you wow. and it, it's surrounding you in an extremely positive manner. It definitely, you know, and it, it's so funny because being where you are, you're gonna, you'll even grasp, you know, what you wanted to accomplish and you have all that insight and you're feeling so great about it. Like I said, you can just reach out and claim it because you're so on top of the world, shall we say, all right? It's, you're gonna know that you're, it's okay. real, you're gonna be really, really supported by all this positive energy and it's even going to open up your horizon even more. And you may say, wait a minute, I could even, you know, 
uh, accomplish more than wh what you started out to in sort of no effort at all because the energy is just so incredible for you at this period. So you have right. it, Gina. So very good. Thank you so much. That's you, a great reading. Yeah, you're very welcome. So take it and run and let me know how you make out. I will. I'll let you know next week. Uh, and one day I will visit. All right, I can hardly wait. I know. You could be right here. We can chit-chat face-to-face, and you can pick your own cards. You could pick your own cards, imagine. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Thank you, yeah. Uh, all righty. Hey, Tina, thanks for calling. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Say hi to all my friends in Medford for me. In Medford, I will. All right. <laughs> yeah, all right. And, Thank and you. You're welcome. Enjoy your week, Tina. You too. Bye yeah, bye. bye. All right, so where was I on this? So, all right, on our reading, I did the Five of Pentacles. So, wait, it took me a long time. One, two, three, wait, wait, no, one, two, three, four. I still can't, it's got to be somewhere, because why would they call it the Five of Pentacles if there's only four? But I really don't see it. All right, anyway, so more, more research. Anyway, so that was that. And then, of course, the next one is the Three of Pentacles. So, because we've started with five, five of Pentacles and we've done some work. So now, you know, we're down to the Three of Pentacles. So we're sort of, we've done some work. We're sort of in the midst of knowing what, what it is that we have to do. The path is right in front of us. We can see it loud and clear. We know what's going on. We have the strength. We have the vitality to keep on trudging through it. And it's not necessarily trudging. That just came out. But, you know, to show, glide through it. All right? Glide through it. We can see the way. There's absolutely, I don't really see any distractions to sort of have us lose our way or maybe take the long way around as opposed to going direct. It, it, we're seeing the whole sort of uh, 360 around us as opposed to just having tunnel vision. You know, and we know how strong we are. We know we can uh, make the endeavor. We know we have enough strength to keep us going throughout the, the whole process here of moving forward and moving forward. And finally, we end up with the Five of Cups. So let's see, one, two, three, and again, I wait, one, two, three, four. Okay, this one has Five of Cups, all right? So, and of course, you know, as we're doing all this work and we see where we're going, we see the whole 360, what we have to keep in mind at this point is, is while we're going and we have that vitality to keep us going, is we don't want to, you know, focus on sort of what we don't have any longer or what it is that we would like that we don't have or what we did have and what we've lost. I mean, it happens to everyone. It, it, there's a reason for that. You know, when you lose things, whether it be relationships or favorite objects we might have, it's because it's time. It served its purpose with you. Let it go. Let go of the past. We don't live there. We move f excuse, excuse me. We move forward, so that's the way to look. And if you continue to look, right, and not sort of concentrate or mesmerize ourselves about, you know, the way it used to be, all right? Then, once you let all that sort of negativity, if it, especially if it's affecting you in a negative way, right? Once you let all that go, and then that's when our sight really opens up and our sight really focuses so... You know, we let go of all that, like I said, what we used to have, what we've lost, what no longer is meaningful for us. Just let it go. Concentrate on 
the beauty that's still around us, our relationships that are meaningful still, uh, and perhaps some material, we can have some materialistic things that sort of are comforting to us. All right, you know, like I have crystal, right? So, you know, like that, see, they're supposed to be here. And they are. So that's it, and you know, once you are, your focus sort of enlarges, and just because it enlarges doesn't mean it gets out of focus. The focus just gets bigger and stronger. And again, we keep going, and you know, it's like they, hello? I'm here for six o'clock. It's, it's, well, it's almost time, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't there anybody out in the room here? Yeah, I don't know who that was. Anyway, so um, our focus just tends to um, increase and sharpen, and you know the darkness from noticing what we've lost uh, is tends to sort of go by the wayside. And it's not that long to pass. It depends all up here. And then the next thing you know, we start to see the light. The path grows ever stronger. The attraction, we open ourselves up to, you know, like giving it to our inner selves, our soul, our spirit guiding us. And voila, there you have it. But. I don't know who that was again, but that wasn't that wasn't very cool. It's coming in. I mean, it's a good thing he's not here for a job interview. We definitely wouldn't get the job <laughs> in my book, anyway. But you know, in in a sense, I'm glad he came in because I got carried away with these cards, and we don't have all that much time left. So, what I do want to say is, um, because all the people that I missed this week, first, energy lady, wherever you are, enjoy your week. God bless. Very strange things going on here. Um, Mr. Whoopi, wherever you are, enjoy your week. For Mr. Whoopi, uh, watch out in the supermarket. Next time you go to the supermarket, just be careful. Um, and Mary, what happened to Mary? I know you said you got a lot of snow, Mary. But do you have power? Maybe you don't have power. I don't know. Um, but and just for one thing, I know I won't. Be here tomorrow, cruising with Mary, by the way, tomorrow, same time, same place, but tomorrow, Thursday, cruising with Mary, 5 to 6, and um, I won't be here, Mary, because I am, uh, I'm going to dinner with someone, so that's the story with that. We only have a couple of minutes left. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know how I wrap these cards up in this little piece of cloth here, but I'll figure it out. Um, so, that's the story, Mary. I hope the kitty's doing well. And Miss Kitty, the new addition, is, I think she's taking over. That's that. And um, next week. I may have a special guest next week. I can't say who it is, but she's uh, very elderly. So last I heard, she wanted to come on and celebrate. And it would be my pleasure if she does. And yours, you'll definitely enjoy her. She's quite the character. Um, like I said, and then... I think the last, then the week after that is this, he's actually a neighbor's boyfriend. He lives way on the other side of the mountains west, I guess. 
out by Keene or somewhere. Um, his name is Lenny. He's very interesting. He wants to come on the 29th. Hopefully that works out. And then, like I said, I'll have the, the my state rep. She can enlighten us all on what's going on up in Concord. And other than that, again, you know who I am. I'm David B. Give me a call, 603-404-9338. Or you can reach out at biffit at yahoo.com, tarot, psychic, psychometry, crystal ball, mediumship readings, and whatever else you might want to know. There you have it. And in the meantime, everybody, enjoy the weather. The next time I'm here, it will be spring. Hopefully the weather will be like spring. And God bless everyone. Give everyone a smile. It's the easiest thing you can do, and it magnifies. All right? And please, please, always, always remember two important things to remember. One, you can't be dumb if you want to be free. Think about it. And more importantly, remember, you are a winner.